What's up guys, welcome to Console Empires. So today I'm gonna to talk about the fastest and most efficient ways to select and deselect units in Age of Empires 2 on Xbox. So if you're a regular here, you might already know a couple of these techniques, but in this one, I'm gonna tie a few of those together and show you how to use those shortcuts in a bit more depth. And you'll learn how to use those selection filters to play faster, improve your unit control and macro more efficiently. Real quick, before we get into these, I wanted to let you guys know that I've got a Discord server now. So if you're looking to find people to play with or just chat about the game, check out the invite link down in the description. All right, so what's a selection filter? Well, they're controller shortcuts that let you well, filter your selection, which sounds kind of boring, right? But they're actually super powerful and can be hugely helpful in overcoming the APM handicap you've got playing on a controller, which I think is actually not as severe as people tend to think it is. And I'll get into that a little bit, but it's not gonna be the main topic of this video. All right, why use selection filters? So one of the biggest steps you can take to improve at the game on PC is to learn hotkeys, letting you do more, more quickly and more efficiently compared to clicking around with the mouse. This is, even more critical on controller, because while navigating with the mouse isn't by any means fast, doing the same with your thumbsticks is super slow. A big reason for this is that a mouse lets you use both gross and fine motor inputs. You can swipe your arm across the table for big movements while maintaining precision with your wrist. And there's no exact way to replicate that physically with a controller, as if you go with faster pan speed that comes at the cost of precision, there's no way to have both. So some Xbox games attempt to address that obstacle with the settings, like as far as easing dead zones, um, essentially creating separate sensitivities for like different amounts of stick deflection, but there's nothing like that in AOE 2, which uh, frustratingly there is in AOE 4. So what you can do is avoid using the thumbsticks as much as possible, and how you do that is to learn to use selection filters. Before we can get started with the actual filters, we're gonna need to be on advanced UI. So if you're not already there, open up the settings, go to the interface, and switch over from simple to advanced. Two big changes that you'll encounter by doing this, LB will now access control groups, and that moves your find menu to the triggers. And what we're gonna focus on in this video, B will now activate selection filters. While in the simple UI, B lets you remove units from the selection with a subtractive marquee, you still have to select those manually with the sticks, and that's what we're trying to avoid. Selection filters is gonna let you quickly control the units that you want without needing to manually click on them. So how these work is with the units selected, you hold B and then press a direction on the D-pad. Pressing the same direction a second time will generally invert the selection. If you hold B and tap LB, it's gonna cycle between the units you've got. And if you hold both, it'll clear any active filters. Getting started with these, you're gonna need to make a selection first to be able to filter it. So I'll go for a few techniques that are, in my opinion, the fastest ways to get a big selection of units with a controller. The most obvious method to select stuff is just to hover over it and tap A, and that works, but it's incredibly slow. A way to do it faster is holding A and just dragging the circle is gonna select every unit it touches. The default marquee size though is pretty small, so that works best if you go in the settings and crank that setting up. I have mine actually maxed out as high as it'll go. So now we're getting somewhere, but using the marquee at all is still relying on the thumbsticks, which is not as fast as it could be. If you want to be even faster, you'll need to learn a few shortcuts. So getting started with the selection shortcuts, first I'll demo the basic ones and then show you how to make some more advanced selections. Then finally, bring it all together by explaining how to more efficiently manage those selections by using selection filters. So the D-pad lets you quickly find a number of important things, and you can use the triggers to access even more selections. D-pad up is gonna select a villager, and tapping up is gonna try to grab an idol, but will give you any if none are idle. Holding up can be used to select all of your idols. D-pad right selects herdables and monks, which might sound kind of awkward, but you're rarely gonna have both at the same time. And if you've disabled quick find snap, this shortcut can be awesome for ordering a bunch of monks to convert different targets. D-pad down is gonna select your town center. D-pad left is gonna select your military units, and like the other shortcuts, you can tap to select or hold to select all. Tapping is useful at the start for grabbing your scout. But what if you just wanna select one type of military unit? So if you hold LT and use your D-pad, up is gonna select infantry, right for ranged, down selects cavalry, and left is gonna grab your siege units. If you add in RB to this same technique, you can select different types of ships also, but you do have to turn that one on in the settings first. Conveniently, while holding LT selects those units, if you hold both triggers, the same D-pad commands are gonna select the respective production buildings. So while LT and right will select your archers, holding both triggers with right will select your ranges. 
Some frequently selected buildings though aren't available as d-pad shortcuts. So for castles, the market, or the blacksmith, the quickest way to select those is going to be holding both triggers to open the find menu and then grabbing the one you want from the wheel. You can hold A on a building to select all of that type if you want to do that. And then once you've got the selection from the find menu the first time, you can go ahead and add those to a control group. I like to put those on diagonals and that makes it easy to select them in the future just by tapping the left bumper. These D-pad shortcuts alone can hugely improve your late game macro just by increasing the speed that you can queue stuff up and reducing misclicks compared to manual selection or the find menu. But wait, there's more. We haven't even got to the cool part yet. After using one of these shortcuts to start a selection, you can then continue to filter down to more specific groups, enabling you to quickly execute techniques that would otherwise be pretty difficult with a controller. Starting at the top, and we're gonna go clockwise around the D-pad again. The first filter is to select injured units. This works for villagers and for military, so it's great for keeping your weak bills under the town center or to pull injured knights back to heal up. A beef I have with this filter though is that the threshold is too low and there's no way to change it. Ideally, I would prefer if there was even separate sliders for military and for villagers. For villagers especially, I wish that it was full HP or injured. If you've got your villagers under the TC on food and you just want to move only full health out to the wood line like at the end of your dark age, you can't do that exactly with this filter as if one is just mildly injured, it's still gonna filter into the full health selection. So to select injured units, you hold B and press up on the D-pad. Pressing up a second time will then select only those high HP units. And like the others, when a filter is active, you can hold B and LB to clear back to the full selection. So moving around to the right here, the next filter selects Siege or Non-Siege, which is a poor keybind if you ask me, as select Siege is D-pad left when nothing is selected, but D-pad right when filtering a selection. So it's weird that they're backwards and it flips from opposite sides of the D-pad. And the market UI, bit of a tangent, is also wrong like that, as if you use the site menu, you get a different wheel compared to if the market is actually selected. Anyway though, if you've got multiple types of siege, this filter is gonna include all of them. And so you're gonna wanna use that B and LB technique to cycle through these specific units. All right, the next filter behaves a bit differently. Holding B while tapping down on the D-pad is gonna remove units from your selection. Unlike the others, tapping down again is not gonna invert the selection, but will continue to remove additional units. A couple of ways you might use this is to ensure that you have the correct number of villagers, say for weakening a boar under the TC or to eat a whole deer in one trip. And for monks, you can start them all on a conversion and use this filter to remove them and retarget the rest without starting their conversion timers over. So by the time you get down to say like the fifth monk in your selection, he's gonna pretty much get an instant conversion. Last but not least, holding B and pressing left is gonna filter military units from your eco units, which can be great for defending from raids. So say you drag a big selection over the whole area of your base that's under attack, then hold B and D-pad left before garrisoning. So that's just gonna hide your villagers while leaving your army out to fight. Well, that's all of them. So now you know some of the best ways to select and control your units when playing AOE 2 with a controller. And if you learned a new technique here from this video, subscribe and <laughs> ring the town bell to get notifications when I post new guides like this one. Thanks for watching.